So we have Rachel and Dia here today. Um, please welcome them. So there are previous admin in DigiPaint from last year. Um, they'll introduce themselves properly after. But Rachel was our um, lovely treasurer secretary. Um, and then Dia was our vice president outreach officer. So very, very wonderful admin here today. You guys are super lucky. Yeah. So um, I'm going to hand it off to them. This mic is acting weird. for building their own performance. So, okay. Hi, I'm Rachel Liu. I am a game artist at Gaudium. Um, they are a local Ann Arbor game studio working on anime mobile games. And so I mainly do asset creations. I make little TV enemies that run around the screen and then I animate some of them. I also animate some of the characters. And recently, I started with character design and illustration, which I'll show in the next slide. I'm also, this is like a, like a passion project side thing, but I'm working as the art lead at Rice Games. Uh, we're developing Shijinko, which is a JRPG, teaching you Japanese. And um, my social media <laughs> is not cool, so I want to show this. Um, here are some of my works. So, um, bottom right character is a character I designed. It's actually NDA, but I got permission to show it for today. Um, it's, and yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and the box art for the game, that's also NDA. Take a good look. Take a good look. Oh, sorry. Oh, wait, what? I'm going to go back though. Okay. Wow. Okay. Um, Damn it. <laughs> so, okay, well, <laughs> my, my current full time job is more so anime style illustration, but I'm planning on working in a Western AAA style, hopefully. So, I have concept, environment concept art over here, and then I have, this is my senior project where I did like a character design, a concept, like game concept exploration, and this is a sketching banner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is my, my stuff. Okay, uh, hello everyone, my name is Divya. I am also a game artist at Gaudium, and I primarily do like character slicing, so like I get flat 2D characters, and then I cut them all up and draw behind all the parts and then send it off to the animator, which more often than not is Rachel, our <laughs> other animator on the team. Um, more recently, I've also done, uh, like, designed the background for the game, and I also do a lot of, like, video editing. I'm currently uh, working on, like, a pretty sizable video editing project for them. And also just, like, miscellaneous design work or, like, anything art-related that's, like, kind of odd jobs, I'll just... I'll just do it. <laughs> um, I'm also the background slash illustration lead for Asians in Animation, which is a nonprofit organization that's um, dedicated to getting people of Asian descent into the animation industry and to increase representation in the animation industry. Um, so my role kind of involves giving notes, doing drawovers, um, creating style guides, monthly mood boards, uh, and then sometimes like I step in and I do the art myself. If an artist can, if, like deliver something on the deadline, I'll just do the art for them. Um, and then socials, it's at Radio on Twitter and Instagram. I haven't posted on Twitter for a really long time. Um, so, yeah. 
And then this is some of my artwork. It is kind of <laughs> it's kind of a mishmash of a of a <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Wait. Uh, okay. Okay, sorry. yeah, it's kind of like a mishmash of a lot of different things, but like this this well the top right right yeah corner uh is my senior project um, where i designed sort of this game concept but mostly like i focused on designing environments based on really specific modes um also done like a lot of my illustrations you'll see will involve some sort of really like mood, mood lighting almost um this is something i did for agents and animation because no one signed up for this art project and i was like okay i'll just i'll step into it and this is a uh, background on the bottom left is a background design project that I did for one of the classes, online classes that I took. And then the bottom right is also another sort of class assignment for one of my online classes. And then this sewing machine thing in the middle is just something that I did for one of my stamps classes, actually, <laughs> uh, which is interesting. Um, yeah. Oh, we're just going to quickly go over our mutual definition of a portfolio, but what is a portfolio? It is your strongest pieces that are relevant to the job, studio, or project that you're applying for. Or it can also be a way for you to convey your artistic goals, your style, and your purpose to a larger audience of people. For this event, we're going to go over more so the technical aspects of a portfolio, so I'm mainly focusing on the first definition. Um, but it's also important to remember that there are a lot of different definitions with your portfolio and it kind of depends on like what context it is that you're developing a portfolio in so there's no real wrong or bad portfolio i guess like unless you have a portfolio with like nothing in it um, in which case it wouldn't be a portfolio at all and that's bad <laughs> okay so we're gonna go over um really quickly some portfolio guidelines for different jobs within the industry um, these are sort of roles that we're most we're more or less familiar with so we can kind of talk to um, but there are points between each role that would kind of repeat as well um, so i'll start off with talking about a visual development artist in animation this is like a very traditional visual development role and visual development is kind of like an umbrella term for like concept art within the animation industry um, you need to be able to draw backgrounds, textures, props, characters equally good. Um, and you need to also be able to ideate, um, sketch, and explore a bunch of different ideas really fast. And you need to be able to do it well. You need to be able to talk about um, where your ideas kind of come from and use a lot of good references. Um, you need to also make, be able to make a lot of detailed callouts for different props, like if you're designing a carpet or designing a table, you need to be able to like zoom into that and talk about oh this is why i chose this particular wood texture for the table or this is why i picked this particular pattern for the carpet um, you also need to demonstrate a strong grasp of color harmonies because your your work will involve creating a, creating one specific character or prop or environment in a bunch of different um, sort of like color palettes and you need to kind of have a good understanding of how different animation roles work because more often than not, you're going to be creating work for a 3D artist to then come in and create models and create environments based on your work, or 2D animators or 2D whatever background artists to come in and base on your work. And I'll be showing uh, a portfolio that kind of demonstrates this uh, later on as well. Okay, so for concept artists, um, a lot of what Dia mentioned about visual development falls under the concept category of concept artists, but with video games specifically, uh, not only do you have to think about or be able to draw characters, environments, props, and make it look good, but also think about the functionality of how it works in a game setting. So if you're an environment artist, you need to explore and design how a character could potentially run around in there. Or if it's a prop, how, how does a character interact with it? How does it function as an object? So there's a lot of design and you know, the function aspect of it that you need to consider. And um, you mentioned being able to draw everything equally good, but with concept artists, depending on your role, you might uh, focus in. If it's a big company, you might only be doing props, might only be drawing environments. So 
you don't necessarily have to be jack of all trades, um, but just having a good sense of exploring your ideas, basically. In your portfolio, you want to include lots of sketches for your work, how you arrive to a certain finalized uh, idea or conclusion. They want um, exploration, they want references, uh, lots of ideation, basically, that's key. Oh, uh, one more thing. And there's a balance between having, like I said, the rough ideations, the sketches, and also making sure you include like the finished polished pieces of every note that you can draw, basically. You can ideate and you can draw, that's important. Yeah, um, moving on to a storyboard artist for animation. Um, your anatomy and perspective, especially your perspective, needs to be pretty like bulletproof uh, because you're gonna be drawing, um, it's arguably the, the role in the animation industry where drawing fast and being able to turn around a lot of different artwork in a very short amount of time is the most important because since you're storyboarding, you're going to be drawing a lot to kind of convey that sense of action, sense of story, um, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, it's okay if you can't draw these really good looking polished characters, but as long as your characters have a good anatomy, um, good sense of action, posing, um, you should be good at that department. But you need to also be knowledgeable of like camera movement, um, you know, story. You also should know like the basics of acting, you know, involving humor, comedic timing, pacing. Um, you need to know like little things such as when a character speaks, you know, what shape does their mouth make for different like syllables and consonants for the whatever language that you're animating for. This is something that's actually done by a lot of like TV studios. Like they'll have a speech chart in which they literally draw out the mouth shape for each like letter, like A, B, C, D, E. Um, you don't need to have that in your portfolio, but if you can demonstrate that you do know that concept, again, that's gonna be a plus for you. Okay, okay. then going, going on to 3D artists, this is a very vague sort of umbrella term again. Mostly if you're a 3D artist, you will decide what you wanna be a 3D artist in, if it's animation, video games, you can decide on a focus like modeling, rigging, animation, special effects, um, crowds animation. Um, and then depending on the type of 3D work, your demo reel will also be required, like if you're doing animation and stuff. And then a quick tip for if you're doing an animation demo reel or any demo reel in general, is that um, it needs to be able to be played without sound because a lot of people rely on sound when they're making their demo reels, but Recruiters, when they're on the go, they'll be like listening to it on their phone or listening to it like on their laptop, and a lot of times the sound won't work. Um, going back to sort of 3D artists, um, you need to focus more on the polish of your models uh, and not so much the ID and not so much the ideation. Oh, you're not on mic? Yeah. <laughs> you're not on mic. Oh. Okay. Um, yeah, you can focus on the polish of your models and not so much the ideation because you need to be able to demonstrate that you can take an idea and deliver a really polished looking model because that's pretty much what any 3D artist in any realm would kind of do. Yeah. So character and prop artists, they kind of combine, or depending on the job, uh, it kind of combines concept artists or 3D artists. Um, if we are focusing on the design of characters or prop artists, here are some things you want to think about and you want to know how to do turnaround. So seeing the character from a front view, side view, back view, that's essential for in your portfolio. Um, for characters having good expressions, not good, good expressions, but having lots of dynamic expressions and good readable poses. Um, let's see, you also just want readable design in general, how it communicates the character as a whole, what their role is. And um, for props, you want to be able to think about this object, if, it, if it's funky, if it's weird, you need to be able to turn it around in space and then examine it from all sides and think about its functionality again. Um, with 3D, if you're like a character artist, you're taking in the, you're taking the concept and turning it into a 3D model or for props too. It's basically just repeat of what Dia said, polishing, make sure everything is of the best polish. Yeah, and then um, to kind of define what, we keep saying the word readable, to kind of like define what readable means, is that when you look at the thing, like the character or the prop from a distance, you should be kind of roughly be able to tell 
what the prop is or what the action that is being done. Like if someone is reading a book, they shouldn't be holding the book to them like this and reading it because when you when you just put like a black fill over it, it just looks like one sort of lump of a silhouette. But if you hold the book, if they hold the book out a little bit and it's very clear that they're holding a book and their face is kind of angled downwards, that's pretty obvious that they're reading a book. So having like taking make, making similar considerations to like making your design be readable in terms of not having too many like overlapping limbs or overlapping like prop components so that when a player or a viewer is looking at it from distance, they can kind of tell um, what the item is. Even if you do read your books like this, realist, realism doesn't always uh, read well mm -hmm. into design, so. Yeah, like that's where all like the really wacky, over-exaggerated like Disney proportions <laughs> come into play. Um, okay, so next we'll talk about uh, an illustrator. Again, another sort of umbrella term. Um, there's a lot of different illustrator roles within the art realm in general. Like there's editorial illustration where you're designing book covers, posters, um, et cetera, et cetera. And there's also like illustrators when it comes to uh, like the video game industry, like designing splash art or box art. Um, and although there are a lot of like differences within these sort of illustrator roles, the singular sort of similarity is that your illustration needs to be able to stand by itself um, and it needs to have a good sense of like attention grabbingness because like your illustration more often than not is not going to be behind to be behind like characters who are animated on top of it or it's not going to be used as like a really rough concept sketch that someone else is going to like you know bounce off of um, it's mostly going to be uh, used as a representative of something, whether it's a game, whether it's a book, whether it's a TV show. So you need to be able to have a good sense of like anatomy, color, composition, all the drawing fundamentals. But you also need to have sort of a confident and good sense of your own style, because that's another thing that draws people to good illustrations is that the person drawing it has a good sense of style. And your illustrations don't often need to be super realistic looking. Um, but it does need to be able to stand alone by itself. And then our last thing that we're gonna talk about briefly is design because we know there are, might be a few like design people in here. Um, I have been hired as a designer in a lot of different roles, but none of them have involved a good design portfolio. <laughs> it's usually that I've just sent them like an illustration portfolio and they've seen that I could draw and just kind of assume that I know how to design as well. Um, but if you were to do a design portfolio like graphic design, product design, industrial design, obviously, you know, traditional design principles. And you also need to know when to bend those principles to make your designs unique. And um, depending on what format you're working in, you need to be able to apply your designs to a lot of different sort of like mediums. Like if you were doing product design, you need to know how to design, you know, books and tote bags or, you know, whatever else. Um, and then this is, a tip for design, but it also applies to like any art portfolio in general. The design of your actual portfolio is another opportunity for you to kind of show off your fundamental skills. Like if you make your, your portfolio look really pretty and really eye-catching, um, whoever's looking at your portfolio is gonna know that you not only can you know make the art, but you can also apply those fundamentals to something such as creating your portfolio. And that really stands out. Um, I recently went to Lightbox convention, which is like for animators and people in the animation industry. Never before have I seen that many people that are so good at art who are also very interested in the jobs that I was interested in. And like that really put it for me in perspective, how much your own work kind of needs to stand out and be unique to you. Um, because, you know, everyone kind of wants to do the same thing, but you need to know how you can put your own voice into your portfolio. Okay, so we're gonna go over some general portfolio tips. This is for any kind of portfolio, but, okay. Okay. So number one, you're gonna to wanna to take into account the studio project or show that you're applying for. So if you were gunning for Riot Games, Blizzard or Disney or any of the big studios uh, with already an established art brand, you pretty much need to cater your portfolio um, to them, maybe 85%, that's an arbitrary number, but majority. Meaning you have to have work that's pretty much in their style or adjacent enough that the skill is transferable enough. And this goes out to other large studios with IPs. You want to be able to, your portfolio should match their, their projects. 
And um, in I'm not actually <laughs> okay. Yeah, or in my personal experience, it's been advised to avoid portfolios with too diverse of art styles. Um, it's very hard to have, or no, having a portfolio good enough for both like Navi Dog and Mihoyo is pretty much impossible <laughs> for artists just starting out. So keep it narrow for now, especially if it's bigger studios. If it's a smaller indie studio, you have more more freedom to put things in. Yeah, and then uh, going into the structure of your portfolio. Again, the way you structure your portfolio is going to depend on whatever job or role it is that you're applying for. But this applies to literally any portfolio that you're creating for anything. It is recommended that you put your strongest work in the beginning. Uh, and then towards the middle, you can kind of put the work that you know, you're putting in your portfolio, but maybe you're not super happy with. And then you end off again on a really strong note. Um, so you go strong, mid, and then strong again. Um, but there's a caveat with this, and that goes into our next point. Our next point is quality over quantity. Despite saying strong, mid, strong, your mid <laughs> should still be part of your best. Don't mm -hmm. put work that is, you're like, kind of eh about it. You're like, it's nice, but also not my best. Don't put that in there because recruiters will judge you on your weakest, weakest piece. Don't try to uh, fluff your portfolio because a good portfolio can be two or three pieces. People have been hired for less. Um, if you put in a piece that has uh, perspective might be a little off, that tells a recruiter that hmm, you're a great environment artist, but your, your, your perspective is a little off. You don't want to communicate that. So only put in the cream of the crop. The creme de la creme. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, kind of going off of that point, uh, don't put in work that you don't want to get hired for. Uh, this is something that every single recruiter has, like, any webinar that I've been to, this is the first thing they always say, is that, like, if you really hate drawing cars and you just put a lot of cars in your portfolio and your cars are really good and you apply to a job that involves drawing cars, and they see your good looking cars, they hire you for drawing cars. You're gonna hate what you do because you hate drawing cars. So that same logic applies to any position that you apply for. You know, it doesn't, it, this might sound contradictory to what we said like, you know, before saying that cater and curate your work towards um, like bigger, like whatever studio that you're applying for, but try to find work within the industry that you're applying to that you genuinely enjoy doing and get good at doing it, and then only put that work in your portfolio. Like, let's say you're really good at drawing props, but you're really bad at drawing, like, characters. You don't need to put characters in your portfolio, because wherever you're applying for, you're going to be applying for, like, prop designer positions, right? Uh, if you put in characters, and by chance someone happens to like your character, they're going to maybe hire you for drawing characters, and you're going to hate it. So no matter how good it looks, even if you think it's a really strong piece, and it looks really, really good. If it's not something that you enjoy doing, don't put it in your portfolio because chances are someone else is also going to really like that really strong piece and then be tempted to hire you for drawing that exact piece again and again and again. And you're going to hate it. <laughs> and then uh, our next point is uh, about specific work versus uh, generalist work. I think we maybe may have touched on this earlier with like the different art styles. Um, How can I, how do I phrase this? Um, this is a question that a lot of people have, I guess, when starting out, especially as students, because you're taking classes or you might be doing work in a lot of different disciplines, you might be tempted to like take your strongest work out of each discipline and put that into your portfolio. And that's okay if you're applying to a position that asks that of you. But if you're applying to a position that's only hiring for a certain purpose, cater your portfolio to only that certain purpose. But if someone else is hiring for like for like um, purposes A, B, and C, then put in work that caters to A, B, and C. Um, the hard thing with this is that you're going to have to change your portfolio frequently. You might have to have different portfolios for different jobs. Um, a lot of people, again, might be tempted to just put in a lot of different tabs on their website with work that's like ranging from like sculpture, like fine art sculpture to you know, storyboard art. And when a recruiter looks at your portfolio, they're like, well, what is it that you want to do? Um, and you know, the recruiters with, with their, their brains, they make it a little confused. <laughs> so yeah, 
uh, depending on what role position you're applying for, um, you have to change and mold your portfolios around that. The last point is kind of like a, like a dog kind of thing, <laughs> but I feel like this kind of thing kind of slips out of your mind. It does for me too, mm -hmm. but you have to make sure all of your pieces demonstrate a good grasp of basic drawing fundamentals. Like anatomy, your character designs, your character concepts need to have good anatomy. Um, your props, your environments need to have good perspective. Your illustrations need to have good color composition. And often you probably need another person to kind of look over everything because when you're, you're tunnel vision into your own art, it's hard to notice that like, whoa, this actually looks like garbage. Like, don't put that in. <laughs> so just, just keep an eye out on those fundamentals. Okay, we can start looking at some industry portfolios. Uh, I chose these three and they're all video game um, industry because that's my jam. Okay, so yeah. Okay, yeah, okay, lovely. Oh, yeah. I will move over here. <laughs> <laughs> so this is Benjamin Carr. He is a concept artist at Blizzard Entertainment. Um, I was having a recruiter at, who used to work at Riot at Blizzard, and he recommended his portfolio to study from because he uh, does a great job at um, mostly, not mostly, so not only character exploration, but mostly the interaction with props. Um, you can kind of see this is the final design, but before that, you can kind of see what other ideas he was playing around with. And they're all very different, but still communicate the same idea. And then after that, you get an idea of how this character interacts with his weapon. And we dive deep into that prop. You don't have to, not everyone has to go into this much detail, but um, you can see how this, this thing, the mechanism works, how the character interacts with it, how he grabs it. And there's more ideation to get to the portion. This kid, this Ben went above and beyond and made animation, but you don't have to do that. It's just a little extra. <laughs> uh, okay, cool. Um, and this portfolio, I think, is what got him into Blizzard. You can kind of tell that everything is already pretty much catered into that Overwatch style. And for companies like Blizzard, you need to have that uh, that style already present. So this is another example of really good character exploration, prop design, how the character interacts with movement, how it can appear in game. Stuff. Moving on to back to our other uh, Night Saint, one of my favorites. She's currently, uh, <laughs> she's currently a senior concept artist at Riot Games. I think that's a very recent development. But what she excels in is her vast explorations. I don't think you guys need this much. If you just condense like maybe a third of this, you'll be set. But you can see how much she plays around with shape, form, movement, um, style, everything. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> My God. Um, this is another one, I think. Look at all of these sketches. Hope y'all are not stressing too much. <laughs> <laughs> and the detail of the prop design, like the, the fact that you can tell, oh, you're supposed to tighten this thing to to uh, find it, <laughs> you see how the character holds it, <laughs> um, all of these detailing, like he has the call-outs. Um, yeah, call-outs. Yeah, good word. And for visual development, she's just done everything. Uh, <laughs> uh, ball. So um, if you use character, prop explorations, Going to great detail about how certain things function, how things look. Um, good. Another wandering mother. Um, this one is really good because you, if you, if you guys did like one third of the TV off that, um, the environment on this is really nice. That's very important to do. More, more sketches, more prop design. And for visual development, having story beats, like how certain cutscenes can play out, that's very important to study. Study film, study uh, yeah, like caps. Visual development, you need to just be good at a lot of stuff. Yeah, it's really good, uh, it's really good 
some illustration for Dota. Of course. Yes. So <laughs> this kind of splash art you can also study very well. Um, I think with industry standard practice to submit like a few thumbnails, they're all very polished <clears throat> that explore different com compositions, different angles and everything. And then the last one is, I actually took a class with him, Simeon Schnapper. He is a freelance concept artist and illustrator, but he's done, I think, most recently, or no, not even most recently, he's worked on The Last of Us 2. Um, with environment uh, concept art specifically, you're going to want to, like with all concept art, include lots of cut, uh, thumbnails, explorations. So this is like a shipyard scene, but there's four versions of it. Um, for environment artists, as for environment concept art, it's also heavily recommended that you learn 3D, especially for this highly realistic style. You're going to want to have multiple angles of the same shot. So this is the final piece, right? But you have these versions. I think it's all 3D models, so you can get lots of shots of the same or similar scenes. Get on 3D if you want to do very <laughs> concept art for a big studio. Then would you say another recommended skill is like photo bashing? Photo bashing. Can we talk about yes, that a little yes, bit. Yes. Um, so with uh, this kind of triple A style, a lot of the art isn't actually fully hand drawn. If you've heard about for photo bashing, it's uh, manipulating photos and 3D models and kind of integrating that into your painting. So you can maybe set up a 3D scene first, get the lighting all fixed up, and then paint on top of that. Or it's like you have a 2D sketch, and then you start combining different parts and textures of photos, and painting over that into a finalized uh, piece. So I think this is an example. That boat is clearly not hand painted. <laughs> <laughs> it's a photo. And I believe most of the ice texture, I think most of Almost all of this is photo bashed. Yeah. So it's not necessarily just about, for concept art, it's not just your painting skill. It's about your sense of composition, how you can take different things and put them together. Don't worry if you can't draw this. Most of you can. Calculate it out. If you want to have that sense of progression with concept art, you want to, how do I get from this place to that place? And this is like a focus. I'm just making it. <laughs> but yeah, if you want to look into his stuff more, there's a lot of stuff here. I think this class is still going. If you want to take it on CCMA, it's very helpful, very nice. It's also kind of pricey. But yeah, that's those are my artists. I can come oh, over there. Six seats. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, I'll talk more about different roles within the animation industry. I'm going to start off with uh, Allison Perry, who is also one of those jack of all trades. Um, she was very, until very recently, an art director at Netflix. Very sadly, her show got canceled like a couple of weeks ago. Uh, but I had the chance to actually uh, interview her for one of the classes that I was taking at Stamps, and she is a wonderful person. I just like messaged her on Twitter. And she was like, yeah, sure, why not, let's talk. Um, but starting off with some like background painting, um, you know, you can see the textures, you can see color, you can see a really good strong sense of lighting. Uh, if you notice all of the characters are painted according to the lighting that's going on within the scene, that's super important to show if you're interested in like visual development, you need to know how lighting affects like character skins and skin tones. Um, and this is the visual development that I was talking about. Um, in which you have to do really specific uh, and polished sort of ideations for different things. Like this is a sketch of the bus. Um, you know, like she talks about it, like packeting. Um, like like it gets really really detailed in terms of like what the actual textures are because again this is stuff that's going to be taken by a three D artist and then transformed into a three D model. Like if you have work like this in your portfolio, like they're going to know whoever's looking at your portfolio is kind of going to know that you are familiar with this realm. But um, visual development is sort of a more senior position within the industry. You kind of work your way up to it. 
by becoming really good at like background painting or pop design or character design, et cetera. Um, yeah, you see it's like a lot of people say like visual development isn't just drawing like pretty backgrounds and characters. It's a lot of this grunt work, which is every single thing needs to have a texture and needs to be called out. But the good thing about that is that when you see this product on the screen, you know you've designed every single aspect. Um, yeah, some other stuff to do about the stuff that she's done. Um, and goes for character design. As you can see, all of her designs are super readable. The poses are dynamic. Um, this character design has a good sense of like texture and it's got her own sense of style in it. Um, she has staged that post character within this background. Again, strong sense of lighting, you know, thumbnails. Um, the similarity between, um, was it was night? portfolio that had that visual development. Mm. Yeah, like color cues. Uh, yeah. She, again, she <laughs> just keeps going. <laughs> uh, okay, let's go into like background design. Um, this would be considered more like background <coughs> painting because you're presenting a painted piece. Uh, again, a bunch of different styles. This is more stylized. This is going into more like, you know, flat, um, a flat, flat style this is more textured um but there's a really good it all of these have like very realistic looking lighting um to show that she can do lighting in all of these different styles and times of day which is also very important showing of showing that you can do this lighting in different times of day um and then this is like a different style of background altogether where you can see that there is like this is more for tv animation uh, so if you've seen like steven universe or um people in the age of the wonder beast this is the kind of backgrounds that they do which is like mine and this type of art this is called background design not background painting because you're designing the background that then eventually gets painted by a background painter so i've found a lot of people on twitter like background designers that will like post backgrounds like this and then say that hey if anyone wants to paint this and put the put this in your portfolio you can so i recommend finding posts like that um, as well yeah, a lot of background design. So, and then obviously, I can I can just keep scrolling <laughs> on her forever. Um, yeah, really stylized character designs. She can do it all. Top design, she can do it all. <laughs> uh, and then professional is gonna be Patrick. Yes. Uh, okay, moving on to Cat Sai, who is one of who is my favorite artist of all time. I took a class with her. Oh, she's so amazing. She's amazing. She's um, <laughs> I, she currently is working on the new Spider-Verse movie. I know, right? And she went to uh, Carnegie Mellon for psychology. So she, she, didn't, she didn't even do art in art school. So she understood the struggle of going to a school that didn't really have anything art to teach. Yeah, her work is very sort of uh, focused on good color, good lighting. And you can see like this, when you look at her work, you won't really find work like this sort of in the industry being used by these big studios. But this is very much her style and how she likes to work. And she has not compromised that in her portfolio whatsoever. And she posts the work that she wants to get hired for. And this is actually the work that she does get hired for. Um, creating color concept sketches, being able to draw characters in a bunch of different like lighting scenarios, different times of day. Um, you know, she she's a master at drawing like these really rainy sort of like scenes. I don't know how she does it, but she does it. And another good thing about her portfolio is that it's all just one page, and there aren't too many tabs except for like her store, her class, which I recommend taking. Um, and then client work is going to be past perspective, but you come on her portfolio, you see all of her work, you know, it's a very fast way to kind of get that overview of what kind of work she likes to do and what she's struggling to do again. Um, okay, going on to Micah Scherf, she is primarily, she started off as a pop designer, she's gone on to story. Um, her portfolio is interesting in a fact that, in a sense that she's got a bunch of these different tabs, but they're within the same realm. And they're like right there in your face. So if a recruiter is looking at her portfolio for a story, um, they can click on the story really quickly. And this is how you're supposed to present storyboard portfolio. You have to have this little reader 
Um, you can't just have them side by side and for recruiters to scroll. That a lot of times they'll just pass over your portfolio. So if you're getting storyboard, you need to have something like this within, you know, your portfolio. Um, going into like props. And she'd also primarily work in TV animation, not feature animation. So you see a lot of the prop work. Um, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, okay, going into Kate Wu, who was a um, stay-at-home mom, and then uh, she just like posted work on her Instagram, and someone that's like my fellow admin on Asian animation um, is telling me that uh, the background lead on their show or our director on their show needed five background painters like as soon as possible so he just went on his instagram and like went through his like following or follow yeah following list and she was one of the artists that he followed and he liked her work and he just told a line producer on the show to like call up these five people and they got called up they got interviewed on the same day and she was working for that studio the next day uh, <laughs> and she didn't go to school for art either and she wasn't even trying to apply to art positions. She just got hired <laughs> for posting on social media, which is a point that we'll talk about very soon. Um, but yeah, you see her portfolio, which is God, it's so good. Um, <laughs> this background that she then talks about ideation. She thought she has really good references. Uh, you know, yeah, the character sort of like this isn't a turnaround, but just like proportions. Um, so you know that she's taken references from where she's taken the references and I don't know, well, um, yeah, again, a lot of really good, really good work. And she did this stuff in Blender, I think, to start off with. Yeah, and then she kind of transformed it into a 3D, or not, into a 2D painting. But another thing is like, this is her unique style and she has not compromised that style and she got hired because of her style, so again, Really important to have your, your own unique style. Uh, yeah, form language studies, illustrations, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, she hasn't posted very many like you know drawing fundamental stuff like oh here's me drawing a clock, here's a still life of an apple. Uh, because all those skills that you show in those like still life studies and you know whatever studies, they're already shown in all of her other work. So if you can do that, um, try doing that because then. Again, that sets you kind of apart from other portfolios. Okay. Okay. We're just going to quickly go over this because the portfolio is back and also there's some more time for me. Um, I can show you my, I guess it's my old portfolio because uh, I haven't added to it in a long time. And the oldest pieces I have are from at least like two, three years ago. I've not had time to work on it, but I can tell you what doesn't necessarily work. Um, for one, let's see, this is the stuff I have so far, but it's it's too much, it's too much stuff. There's not cohesion. I have like hyper realistic, or not even hyper, like semi-realistic stuff going up here. But then I have like this anime-ish art here, and then I have like this weird, uh, very cartoon thing. And if you especially if you go into uh, like this one. Ben, Benjamin Carr critiqued my portfolio. He immediately noticed that, like, oh, the perspective on this horn is off. So mm -hmm. keep in mind when you're submitting to like uh, big studios that like, like these small details are very uh, noticeable for them. So this is my uh, a little, a little updated. But when I for my new portfolio, I'm kind of doing this piece, this piece, and this uh, UI thing, and then this one. So I'm remodeling it completely. That's my portfolio. Okay. And then I'll also talk about my portfolio briefly. Uh, again, not super happy with it in its current state because it's not really serving the goals that I wanted to serve. Um, and I kind of shoehorned this very last minute for Lightbox because I wanted people to like know everything that I did in a really short amount of time. Um, but I think what I would personally do is just have two tabs, um, one for background painting and one for specifically color design. I need to do more pieces that are industry standard color design and industry standard background painting. 
Um, someone that critiqued my portfolio said that um, it's good like to draw more out exterior shots, but do it in like a widescreen format because that's how most people stream these days. Um, and then another person that critiqued my portfolio said that uh, he enjoyed looking at these works that had sort of, I can't, okay, that had like lines in them, but um, again, they needed to be in that widescreen format. I needed to have like better lighting and stuff, which is not thing I'm planning on doing. Um, one thing that I, that's an improvement from my very first, you know, student portfolio uh, was that there was a lot of work that I was making that I was happy with at the time. And I would just put all of the work up there without really caring about like what my goals were. And that really wasn't good because I just confused anyone that was looking at my portfolio because they had no idea what I really wanted to do. Because everything that I seemed to put up was had an equal level of polish to it. Um, so one thing that was a hard pill for me to swallow, but I'm working toward working on it is knowing that all the art that I create is not going to go on my portfolio and I shouldn't be creating art in the first place with the sole purpose of putting it in my portfolio. Yeah, I dedicate some time to making art that I know I want to put in my portfolio, but all the other times I just draw what I want to draw. I don't really stress too much about, oh, I need to put this in my portfolio. Or if, it, if this looks good, I'm going to put it in my portfolio. Okay, that just makes you, I think, stressed out as an artist. And that is not, that is a no, that's not really good. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then just another quick tip about like portfolios in general is like accessibility. If you have like a, a link to your portfolio, but then you have another link to click to go to your actual portfolio, and then you have that password protected, and then you don't have your name. Uh, whoever's looking at your portfolio is going to be like, what is this? What is this maze that I've been sent into? And who is this person? And why do, why should I care about them? So try to make your portfolio as accessible and as easy to reach and read and see as possible. Yeah. Uh, yes. So we're going to, should we do the drawovers? Yeah. First, okay. We're going to do some drawovers first. This, we're using the as iPad. I don't use Procreate, so um, heads up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, wait. Look. Oh, yeah. Is everybody here? Is everybody that submitted here? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, let's let's just critique as if the people that submitted are not here at all. Are, are they don't we? exist? Yeah, they don't exist. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay so. so starting off with. Okay, let's start off with uh with a oh, big fish. Big fish. Okay, so uh, the person that submitted this says that they want to improve their pieces to get hired as a background or character concept artist. Um, and they ask for, you know, what parts need more work and what they should practice more and how can they improve their pieces in general. So, okay. Rachel? So I guess first, when I first look at this, um, I think the composition, you could probably rearrange a few things so that it's fitting into more of that, like, the, the, you know, the rule of thirds. So the eye can probably, the ship can probably go. Oh. So the rule of, is it gonna, is it gonna let me? Come on. Come on. Okay, yeah. So the rule of thirds would be like, oof. That is not <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> um, it's over here. Yeah, something over here. Like the, you draw on the intersection points. Yeah, we could probably shift the, the eye and the boat closer to those focus points. And I, just assuming from this piece by itself, we want to communicate that this is a very big fish, right? So I think we can... Uh, Give it a bigger, uh, give it a better sense of scale by um, darkening it. So providing more, not only more contrast, but having it cast a shadow onto the bow, perhaps. Let's see if I can. Ooh. Okay, okay, okay. Having it, having cast. Oh my god. That's <laughs> <laughs> too light. Whatever, you know, it's casting your <laughs> 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 Okay. 
like I said, I don't know how to use Procreate. Um, okay, so one multiplier now, yeah. Yeah, okay, so a, a more shadow and then have light peek through from here so that the, the, the fish is casting the shadow. And I think, let's see, I feel like we can make the boat a little smaller mm -hmm. or include oh, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> include more background space, extending the canvas up, up. Oh, you can't see these. <laughs> extending the canvas up top so mm. that there's more sky just to show that, that have more things in relation to not only the fish and the boat so there's there's more like a point of comparison basically so we fill this in maybe um this is really messy this is yeah well, it, it, <laughs> okay cast a shadow maybe uh -huh. and then and then one thing i guess you could kind of cheat um because like the fish is looking down with the eye uh a trick that a lot of people use when drawing like really big pieces like this is like the sort of more the more focal point it is the more detailed it is and sort of the less you care about it the more sort of like stylized and rough it can be I would say the eye is a pretty big focal point so like really making that look polished and detailed and having the boat look polished and detailed and then maybe the rest of the fish as it kind of goes out of the eye can then be less polished and a little bit rougher um, and you could also add like a little glint. You could cheat a little glint into the eye to like, you know, make it really stand out. And also probably add like a reflection of the boat and yeah. also of the fish. Mm. You'll probably get in there with the like the eye reflection of the eye just to, for cool factor. Hold on. Okay. This is how I collect the color. Okay. This is the, the eye here. Yeah. And then I think... Um, more maybe more stuff here just Ooh, okay yeah that's bad <laughs> <laughs> okay um yeah. yeah this is sorry this is not a good <laughs> yeah it's a, we're doing it really really fast but um i guess if through our talking i hope whoever submitted this piece you know gets uh <laughs> 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 uh gets what we're kind of talking about well I, i'd be more than happy to do do this properly on my laptop later <laughs> yeah okay yeah uh -huh. okay next one. All right, going on to our next piece which is also submitted by the same person mm, out, outside the dome this is a cool composition yeah so i guess first thing looking at this you can kind of tell the focal point is that building right there and mm -hmm. there's no, just like a leading path coming from down from the bottom that leads oh, that's not a good color red blue it's green. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell that it, it leads you up, but I think you can make it more visually interesting by varying up the position of the light spots. Mm. Uh, okay. This is, can I change the, what's a, what's a good water pump? Oh. So we could probably, oh, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> It's like watching a to toddler learn how to. You got this, Rachel. You're doing well. Okay, basically, what I want to do <laughs> is create more variation in how in the light spots, just to show that just like a like a path leading up there, right? And I would say this this is all work in progress, right? Whoever, I'll just. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. I okay. feel you. Yeah, I do yeah, that. Yeah. So I think even though this this area is all in shadow, I think you can very like very subtly hint at what is going on here. Um, let me change. That. What's a good? What's a recommendation? What do you want? What do you want to do? Uh, just like you know, texture, 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 and pen. Spectra. 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 Okay. I got so many brushes, man. <laughs> okay. 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 No, 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 no. I got it. I got it. I got it. Spectra. I guess this is, I guess, I guess, oh, hold on. Yeah. Okay. Fair cool. enough. Nice. Fair enough. Okay. So like, there's like under, it's like the underside of it. Oh my goodness. Like communicating what's going on here. This is like a little ledge, right? Um, like, ooh, jeez. Okay. <laughs> Fumbling. <laughs> like showing that there's stuff going on here. It's like a window or maybe like a collapse or this stuff just a little bit more detail here because the, it's not completely opaque black right mm -hmm. some light will show through the corners maybe like right here too yeah maybe maybe making more 
like a little, like a slight. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you gotta run low opacity. Uh, like maybe a few more leading lines. That it's kind of hard to see. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's okay okay so just to kind of like narrate uh the point rachel is trying to illustrate here uh a rule of thumb whenever you're drawing anything in shadow is that no, no shadow is ever black like please don't ever use black for a shadow um because there's just so much more opportunity to uh play around with what is actually in shadow like if you have something that's being affected by a shadow, chances are there's going to be like bounce light on it. Um, so the stuff that's in shadow, the two big shapes, they're going to have bounce light coming from the inside. Um, you know, they could have maybe a color, like if they're actually red, they can have like a very dark. How do I? Okay. They can have a very sort of like dark red within them. So just like uh, adding points of interest, even to shadow shapes and not having two domineering sort of shapes. <laughs> visible i if i put my brightness up does that help <laughs> can you take, take a look <laughs> anyways uh okay should we should we move no, on move on but okay. basically yeah there's light should penetrate to some degree does that make sense <laughs> <laughs> okay all right moving on to our last piece all right character concept I freaking love this pose. It's so good. I love the little tongue sticking out. <laughs> Very cute. Uh, like my only point of uh, advice for this would be to like draw more, you know, like draw this character like in maybe like a more static pose, draw them in different sort of poses as well. Uh, and another thing, like a very sort of like quick tip to making any sort of like character art, I guess, look really good is like add in Throw in a multiply layer on the top and then just like uh, take out the, you know, like <laughs> where the light is like affecting. You know, like pretend that there's a spotlight coming um, on them from like the very top. You see this a lot in like, I guess, anime, more, more anime focused art, if that makes sense. Um, but this is like a nice way of, I guess, showing a polished character is like just adding some sense of like um, good lighting to them. Oh, but um, so if we want to look into character concept art, yeah. um, is this a character, sorry, I feel like I should ask questions. Is this a character design as well? Like, uh, or is it more so just like a showcasing the, the character? Uh, like, that's a bad question. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, is this, is this your original character design? Okay, cool. So one thing to check, um, with character design is how you've grouped colors and shapes and um one thing is putting everything into black and white just to see how like the shapes and values read saturation gotcha and i'd say it's overall decently readable but like maybe the hair and the, the shirt are a little close in value but that's also okay because the overall like style of it is more matte more flat Oh yeah, this is cool. Yeah. Maybe if I had some critique, I would add more hair to the ooh. Um to the bottom of the of the head just to show that there's like volume. Volume like this. They got a round I'm assuming head. there's more hair <laughs> in the back of their head. So it's an anime thing. Yeah, this is cool. Yeah. All right. Moving on to our next person that wanted to be critiqued. Um, starting off with, oh, wow, six. Uh, how can my, the person uh, is asking, um, how can they make their pieces be more visually stronger, effect, visually stronger, effective, and visually stronger, <laughs> effective in storytelling? And what pieces are strongest for a portfolio that's, that wants to be in the entertainment industry? Um, right off the bat, I would say this person has a really good sense of their own personal style, which is really good. Um, I'm loving all the sort of like textures, especially in the clouds here and here. Um, I love the colors of the clouds as well. Um, one thing that I guess I would 
say is that you need to have more of I guess a focus on what position it is that this person wants in the industry is this person here <laughs> okay <laughs> uh, if I were to Wait, what was the question? Oh, I would say uh, within the entertainment industry, what is a position or a role that you would like to do? Not sure yet. Okay, fair enough. Um, <laughs> I would say, you know, I think characters are integral to what you draw and you've got a really cool style of drawing them. And I like how this is going from, is this the same location in like different times of day? Amazing. <laughs> um, I would say extend, zoom out your camera a little bit more and show me more of the environment that you're drawing um, because it gives more information. And the characters can be pieces of the environment, but um, they can be there as a little cool Easter egg. But you're really sort of like showing off your environmental sort of painting skills um, because you're really good at that. Um, like moving on to oh, oh wow. wow one. Um, really good thing about this is that your the character's skin tone is really matching the lighting of the piece. Um, that's one thing to really keep in mind is the first question you should be asking yourself is what oh, is so green on there? Oh my <laughs> god. Um, is to be asking what is uh the primary primary light source in the whatever it is that you're trying to reference and what color that light source is because that's going to be affecting pretty much everything within the painting. So light source is a sort of like overcast, you know, sky. And that's why this character's skin tone is also being affected um, by that. I would say this is really good as it is, but I think they can also push the character more into the background, adding more blue, more green overall as an overlay. Just see how that looks maybe. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Overlay. Take this color. And there you go. <laughs> That's not the right color. That's not the right color. Okay, it's just like pushing in the character into the environment, <laughs> yeah, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I think, yeah, just um, maybe the shadows are kind of purple right now, but making them more blue, more green mm -hmm. would help blend them in better. Mm -hmm. And again, I guess like uh, maybe changing up the your canvas framing a little bit and I guess telling a story with this piece. Um, moving on to, I think, your like these pieces would lend itself better to like an illustration like if you were to do any editorial illustrations like for book covers or like book illustration poster design um these would be like absolutely perfect because i think it hits every single point of what makes a good illustration um for entertainment design i would say work like this would be uh it would be more within that realm um Having seen some of your previous work, I know you do do like character design stuff as well. I think that would be uh, kind of cute to put in to your portfolio uh, because there are certain ways that you've kind of come to think of your characters, right? Um, so adding that in again would showcase your ideation, et cetera, et cetera. Um, yeah. Mm. So moving on to our last uh, piece critique and then we'll move on to some websites. Uh, well, okay, actually, I was already messing around with this. Okay, so the person asked, um, so I recently started digital art, but I don't have a portfolio. I just submitted one piece for critique. Um, since I'm a bit of a no novice, I'm seeking any insights or advice for this specific piece. And the question is about this piece. Uh, what do you notice first about my piece? What bothers you most about my piece? And what is the most fundamental improvement that I can make in your uh -huh. opinion? Do you guys want to answer some of those questions? Like, what do you first notice about this piece? A lot of blank space, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Any other first impressions, observations? Uh, the petals. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, mm. so the readability of mm -hmm. what the objects are that are coming in from the background. Okay. Um, I guess that also kind of answers like, you know, what bothers you bothers you most about the piece? I would phrase it more as like, what more can, what's the most fundamental improvement mm -hmm. that they can make? Um, so yeah, looking at this piece and kind of jumping, up, jumping off of what everyone has said, piggybacking up. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say the framing of this piece, you could probably work on, since this is a very like, vert like a vertical character only, you could probably take in the, like, ooh, <laughs> you could probably take in the canvas to keep, oh goodness, <laughs> golly gracious. You might have to make a new layer. And then, yeah. Okay, yeah. red. Yeah. Okay, great. I would probably, oh my God, size. This is embarrassing. <laughs> okay, I would probably cut it from here to here. Mm -hmm. or, yeah, cut it maybe here. And I think you could also, okay. you could probably, Gaussian blur these mm -hmm. um, petals right here. If um, if you don't know what that is, I think I can do it right now, right? Yeah. So yeah, I'll leave it to you. Yeah, I can. I can take care of that. Novice. So Pro essentially, I know that's another tip. Um, have you guys heard of like not if you don't want to draw the other eye, you cover the face with like hair. Mm -hmm. Um, that's pretty much like the illustration equivalent of like if you don't want to draw something in your piece, um, you can just add something that's super in the foreground that's like just a black amorphous shape and blur it to hell. Because um, then it's like, oh, something's obscuring the camera. <laughs> um, which is what we're going to do with this. Oh my gosh, I'm on the wrong layer. Okay. Okay, so blur. Whoa, whoa. Why is it blurring weirdly? Okay, well, whatever. You get the idea. But you get the idea. This, yeah. this would help if you do it properly. <laughs> you get it helps convey a sense of depth depth of these cameras. This what these petals coming from the camera towards the character in the in the mid ground. Yeah, and generally, if you're blurring something in the foreground, it's also a good idea to kind of like darken them a little bit because so if something comes to the camera, it gets darker because there's less sort of like light coming in. So you can darken this up a little bit, not so much, a little bit. Um, Yes, yeah. and um, looking at the like the character itself, I would say the rendering is pretty good. Um, I would say the thing that sticks out to me about the character itself is the face anatomy. I think you could probably uh, look into studying how light interacts with the face. Um, for example, I think because you have like the nose somewhat defined with line, but the but the light should follow that line. I think I I did this a little earlier, but. You can, uh, this is like an anime nose, <laughs> but you can uh, have the light follow the bridge of the nose and the eyelids should also cast some, some shadow as well. Um, uh, I don't think you need that much actually. So I can, oh, <laughs> you could, I'm on the wrong layer. <laughs> you can erase some of that and yeah. Same thing with uh anatomy thing. I think the collarbones don't need to go down that far. They probably would instead just extend a little bit. Let me change my brush. Spectra one. I don't know what spectra one is. That's very <laughs> <laughs> sorry about my plethora of brushes. Whoa. Square brush. That don't use that. Okay. <laughs> Drawing. A little pine? Like, sure. A gloaming. That's not gonna be okay. No? It just, 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 just okay. okay. Just, just fix some things. <laughs> Bro. I think, yeah, collarbones. Yeah, collarbones. They, they, there's a more gentle slope, basically. Yeah. Not that sharp of an angle. And, yeah, this is really nice. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's move on to some website. We'll uh, all these things that we've like drawn over. We'll send them to the Digimon that will then email them. We'll do them properly later. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. So we go to some websites real quick. Oh yes. Sorry for all the fumbling around. Um, I hope you got the the gist yeah. of we're trying. We're, we're yeah. trying to critique a lot of pieces in a short amount of time. With a with Procreate. With, with Procreate. <laughs> Wait, Charlie, um, can you pull up the, the spreadsheet? 
But yeah, while they kind of pull that stuff up, do you guys have any questions so far? We've just been kind of like speeding through all of this. Yes. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> Can we share the presentation with the Discord? Yeah. Would that would that work? Would would, would, would that would that work? If we yeah. share the slide. Yeah. Okay. Okay, great. Yeah. <laughs> uh any other questions about portfolios? Video game industry, animation industry. Yeah, we're pretty active on there. I'm chronically on Discord. Yeah. <laughs> so the moment you send it, I will probably see it. <laughs> okay. Uh, so. Starting off with this portfolio. Okay. Fortunately, it's not anonymous. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, this is good. So you can see this person's name right off the. Go for it. I believe uh, you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Storyboard. Storyboard. Who's there? Who's there? Okay. Who's there? Okay. Who's there? okay. For feature anime. Okay. So this person has a story portfolio. Again, it's very good that they have this sort of like, um, you know, clickable format in. They have subtitles for everything. Uh, and their story boards are pretty rough. I guess the one piece of feedback that I would give with this is it's okay for your story, if you're doing storyboard portfolio, yeah. storyboard portfolio, it's okay for your stuff to be uh, pretty rough, but you need to, certain certain details need to be resolved. Like for example, the eyes and the overall expression needs to be a little bit more clearer. So um, I guess if you're attempting a storyboard portfolio, it's really important to keep in mind what is your, what is your focal point in each scene and then focus your energy on really rendering that well. And then, you know, when it comes to the other stuff, like the horse or the dad's arm, or I don't know if it's a dad, but the person's <laughs> arm, <laughs> uh, person's arm, you can get a little bit rougher with that. Uh, but yeah, I like their story portfolio in terms of the actual structure. It's very, you know, right off the bat story. I scroll down, I see some boards. I see really good ideation. But one thing is I can't click on this and the text is really small, so I can't really read what's going on. Um, and that is not good because if you put any text on your portfolio whatsoever, it has to be readable, uh, not only with eyes, but also with a screen reader. So try not to have so much text be on the images that is then not also translated to be read by a potential uh, screen reader for people that are you know, um, using it. Um, but yeah, I really like the characters. I love that they have their boards up here. Um, so my big pieces of feedback would be to, I guess, resolve certain pieces of their storyboards a little bit more before putting it on and um, adding, if they have any text, uh, making the text be a little bit more uh, readable. Mm -hmm. And then this section is good, uh, that they have gesture drawing and sketchbook here. I would most likely put this in a different tab altogether um, because I would want to see more of these and not just a collection of these many because you know I'm, I'm sure any artist that's had a sketchbook they have a lot of different like things that they sketch so we want to see more of that um, volume when it comes to this dev um, very very good um, like strong rendering skills especially here I can tell that there's some color bashing going on um, with the textures. Uh, For the second piece, yeah. I would say, um, kind of just like a, there's a little bit of like, a, what's the word? Disconnection between yeah. the rendering of like the cake and the, and the balloons versus the texture on the, on the ground. So I think maybe filling out the, or uh, bringing some of that 
like realistic graphic kind of texture into these pieces would also make it look a little bit more cohesive. Yeah, and then this is something that you will find will haunt you if you decide to pursue sort of environment painting or like just any drawing, ellipsis. Yes. Oh. The number one thing that will always throw your perspective off and will signal to the viewer that the perspective is off is ellipses. Your circles will always betray you. Uh, like for example, this cake, the perspective on it is a little bit off mm -hmm. because this circle right here is not as flat as it needs to be as the table is. Uh, appropriate Photoshop, Clip Studio Paint, all of these programs have really good perspective guides. Please use them. That is not, it's not cheating if you're using them. It's a good learning tool. Some artists get to the point in after 20 years of drawing where they can sort of freehand this stuff, but please don't be afraid to use perspective guides because again, if there are perspective errors, um, that is, it just, it really hurts your um, overall sort of portfolio. Um, love this character. Oh my god, I'm so good. Um, yeah, really good character work. Turn around, we got turnarounds in here. Um, I like that their work is sort of grouped by different projects. Good stuff. They have like a variety of different. Oh my gosh. Whoa. Okay, this work should go more towards the top. Like starting, I would say, like, Almost flipping this format a little bit. Um, putting this stuff, put your strongest work at the top, even if it means breaking up your projects. If you have your portfolio divided up by projects, again, the strongest work at the very top, no matter what. The first piece you showed was very strong, but yeah. I'd say this one's a lot more eye catching. Yeah. You want to draw, make them want more. Uh, and yeah, also having an above section. Very good. Very nice. Sucks. We're reviewing everything. Um, <laughs> yes. Well, okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. Should we go to our next proposal? Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. We have someone who is looking to get into dancing at the class online site. Gotcha. Okay. And I would say from these two pieces, you're on the right track. Um, Making anime art for anime games is good. However, <laughs> I would say I think it's important to not only not only create a uh, really nice piece like this, but to also start tackling into anatomy and how anime faces in general look. Um, like immediately, I can notice that the nose position is a little bit awkward compared to where the eyes are. Like I'd probably shift it left just a bit more, and. I think doing master set, not master, but doing studies of existing Genshin or art nights would, or not even master, but just fan art of that would help because not only does it gain you following, but once you get popular enough, they actually Genshin, you know, Mihoyo and Yostar, I think. Is that the creator of they, art nights? They, they will reach out yeah. to um, So more anatomy and this one. Very nice. So I guess it's just more a refining of digital painting as a whole, but this style is very nice. Um, let's see, are you? Is, are you in the room right now? Are you in the room? Yeah. Oh, hello. Are you in the band for dance club? Yes. Okay, awesome. Uh, you know Andrew and Bob, right? If you reach out to them, they have lots of good advice for getting into the anime industry. But once you get to a point, I would recommend that you make a pixel. And you know what pixel is? Yeah. The, the, the big anime companies, they scour pixel looking for <laughs> artists to hire. So once you're at a point, go, go make one of them. Go make an account there. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so this person um, just wants general tips and tricks about going into um, concept design. And um, so right off the bat, I would say one thing I like about the portfolio is that <coughs> what? Oh, 
as a vegetarian. Oops. Okay. Yeah, so this person wants to go into concept design um, and they want general tips and tricks. One thing I like about the portfolio right off the bat is all of their work is on one page. Um, but a problem that I can kind of see is that there's a lot of variation in the type of work that is actually on here. Um, so it's a little bit unclear to me what their goal is in terms of like what type of art it is that they want to do because there's so many different variations of art. So my biggest piece of feedback would be to focus in on what art it is that you want to do um, and then just draw more within that realm. Uh, don't fall into the trap of putting in all the art that you've ever done onto your portfolio. Um, this is something that was told to me by a recruiter that I I don't really agree with, and I don't think it's a bad thing, but it's just how the industry is. Um, some recruiters and studios will actually disqualify your portfolio if it comes off as too much of a student portfolio. Meaning that there is, again, like a lot of different types of art. If you have a lot of like still life drawing and very obvious class assignments on your website, um, this is something that I got told off for, <laughs> uh, but I was sort of like submitting my portfolio for critique. Um, I don't agree with this and I don't like that it is this way, but that's sort of something to keep into consideration as you're moving forward. If you have a class assignment that you're really proud of and you want to put on your portfolio, uh, you, you can just leave out the fact that it's a class assignment and talk about it as a, if your own sort of personal project. Um, okay. Oh, wait. Can I mind? Oh, go ahead. Okay. So that, that one, that great black and white is a really nice piece. I think more pieces like that is a great way, way to get into concept art, but also if you zoom out, uh, these headshots, I think you can put them into more character. If they are like little snapshots of a bigger character design, you don't have to like throw away any of these pieces, but use them into, or like use them as, you know, this is a headshot of a character and this is the full body of the character. So getting more like actual design of full body shots, details of a, Yes. Work towards repurposing what you already have. Uh, so real quick, go through the other portfolios. Um, okay, uh, this person uh, wants a summer internship in the architecture realm, uh, which is something I am very not familiar with, but <laughs> I can talk about it in terms of a general portfolio. Um, so right off the bat, uh, there's an overview of all the pieces that are present, like present within the portfolio, but I would say that this is, you don't really need to have this because when I first looked at it, it kind of confused me because I thought this was a portfolio and I didn't realize until a lot later that um, it was just like a table of contents essentially. Um, I would say it's like just good for the, for whoever's looking at your portfolio to just jump into your portfolio as it is. And um, I like that they talk about each um, project in the corner and they have a nice big screenshot of it. Um, their text is really readable. There's a lot of different iterations of the text. Again, I'm I'm not an architect, but I think it looks like a good house. Um, <laughs> so I will say it's a pretty good house. Um, so I, I have no comment on the quality of the house. Um, but then as you kind of go further down, uh, there again, is a lot, of, a lot more variation within what's actually in the portfolio. If you're looking for a portfolio in architecture, I would say focus on the pieces that deal with architecture and not so much of this other type of design because you can put that into a design portfolio, for example. Like this is really good for an architecture portfolio, um, but this maybe not so much. Again, maybe not so much. There come the car designs. I don't think that will do very well in terms of like architecture. Um, but yeah, so again, uh, it's okay to make multiple portfolios to address different jobs. Uh, specificity is good. It shows that you know what to do even as a student. And I think that's what sets you apart uh, in an internship is that if you know kind of what you already want to do. Yeah. Our last portfolio is one of, wow. So good, so pretty. Uh, this person wants to get hired as a freelance illustrator. Um, I would say right off the bat, I would have this be the landing page uh, instead of the about me page because I land into your work and I can get a good sense of what your 
uh, work is. Uh, with freelance illustration, I used to do freelance illustration for the Michigan Anonymous magazine. And when you're submitting your portfolio for those roles, again, it can also get really specific based on what people are hiring freelance illustrators for. So if someone's hiring for a medical illustration freelance position, this would be uh, a pretty good portfolio to have. Uh, I'm not very familiar with like the medical illustration sort of realm. So I guess I can't comment too much on what's good and what's not. Um, but I think they do sort of follow the rule of putting like your stronger work maybe towards uh, the beginning. But there are some of these that I would say focus more on the, the quality over the quantity and uh, specificity things that we've talked about today. Um, and they also have different kinds of posters. And I think there's a lot of variation within their portfolio, which again, might be okay, depending on what they're applying for. But if their goal is to only get hired as a freelance illustrator, I would honestly take these two, these tabs out and focus more on the illustration aspect. Um, this is super cool. Oh my gosh, wow. Mm -hmm. um, I would highlight this as well because Doing a mural is not a joke. It is very hard. <laughs> and I would say if you can do mural for someone, you're demonstrating that you can work with uh, a client, you know, to kind of showcase their vision, which is key for freelance illustration. So I'd say keep the mural in, maybe expand a little bit more on it. Um, maybe show like the sketches that you did to kind of like come to this mural, um, some more pictures of it, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, looking at the posters tab, uh -huh. I would say a lot of the pieces there actually are would really work well as just illustrations too. Mm -hmm. Um, so I guess just like restructuring, restructuring yeah. some of these pieces could count as pieces for your illustration portfolio. I think double yeah. dipping is, yeah, that's okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so that is all in terms of the website critique, we're going to end off with a few final words. Oh, yeah. I just have a quick comment for this person. Yeah. We had a medical illustration speaker a while back in California, and if you go on our YouTube, um, she has like a whole speaker event on it, and she has her contact information as well, so she's willing to look at people's portfolios too, if that person is interested in it. Yeah. Okay, um, all right, moving on to some questions. Yeah, let's, we're, gonna, we're gonna blast through this because we don't wanna keep you guys for too long. Uh, okay, so PDF versus online portfolio. It's preferred that you have an online portfolio, uh, even if that is your social media. If you don't wanna like make a whole website for it, um, you can just post stuff on your Instagram for the time being. Um, PDF portfolios are required for certain positions where they ask you to submit like a PDF. But usually they'll also ask you to submit um, like a website along with it. So it's focused on your on the online aspect. Portfolio website? Oh, no. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, for portfolio websites, if you guys are students at UFM, uh, the Adobe Creative Suite comes free to you. Adobe Portfolio is Adobe's portfolio website service. It's free. I use it when I was a student. Um, so I would really recommend using that as a free option. Wix is another free option. Uh, portfolio box used to be free. I don't think it's free anymore. If anyone can correct me on that, please go ahead. Uh, Squarespace is what a lot of people in the industry use. Um, it is paid, but if you're a student, you get like a 50% discount for a year subscription. And you also get a free domain name, which is what I took use of. Um, and again, if you don't want to make a website, your like websites like ArtStation, if you're in the video game industry, Art pretty, very good. pretty good. Um, and other social media like Twitter, Instagram, et cetera. Um, if you happen to uh, find yourself doing NDA work, um, you can kind of get around that depending on who you're working with, you have to, you might have to communicate with your supervisor, but you can put NDA work in the portfolio, but it has to be passcode protected and you'd probably end up giving the passcode to your recruiter or the recruiter through the resume? The, um, either resume or like whatever application. Like that's really important that if you're applying to something with a password protected portfolio, please send them the password. Otherwise you'll get immediately disqualified. <laughs> so please send them the password if you have anything password protected. Uh, next point is 
take your time when making your portfolio. Like, make sure you don't get super, like, don't have your life revolve around your portfolio. Because mm-hmm. I remember Dia and I used to get super just bummed out. Bummed out. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at better portfolio sophomore year. But, like, a lot of professional artists say that they usually take a gap year after graduating to fully dedicate to their portfolio. Mm-hmm. Like, you, you can take your time. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, always just have a body of work to show again. If that's on your Instagram, if that's on like a Google, like a slides presentation, if someone asks to see your work, um, you should have something to pull up because that's unfortunately what it takes to be competitive in the industry um, these days. Um, It's okay if you are not happy with where your portfolio is, hardly anyone is. It's always going to be a work in progress. But in the meantime, just have something that you can refer back to. Um, Another point I really want to make is that your portfolio should be able to stand by itself a lot of the times when you submit it, when you show it to people, you're not going to be there to talk about it. People are going to look at your portfolio um, without explanation, without you there to like talk about your pieces. So if there's a lot of unexplained things in unexplained phenomenons in your portfolio, um, that's just going to confuse anyone that's looking at your portfolio and it's going to like turn them off from your portfolio. So just make sure your portfolio is eye catching and that it stands by itself. Feel free to have like text explain certain pieces, but also make sure not to have like huge chunks. Well, of, yeah, yeah, that's not very fun for for you to read. Through, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, social media as a portfolio, it's social media is a great way to get hired because I actually got hired because someone found my Instagram. And said, Whoa, you do characters? Want to work for me? I'm like, yeah. So, uh, even if you hate your stuff, put your stuff out there. Yeah. Uh, people will like it, and yeah. it's really good to build a following and also connect with other artists as well. Uh, so Twitter, Instagram, Art Station, Kixit. Mm-hmm. Uh, start posting. Yeah. Also, Discords. There are so many Discord communities that are dedicated for like artist communities. Like there's Japan is one of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's like different ones based on identities. There's Black and Animated. There's Latin Next Animation. There's Rise Up Animation. Women in Animation. Asians in Animation. There's a lot of these different communities that are dedicated to um, getting artists from underrepresented underrepresented uh, identities into the animation or video game industry. So take advantage of that. Uh, okay, we will also this presentation will be linked in the in Discord hopefully, or it will be made available to you. But this is like an hour long. Uh, I'm not gonna play. It. Okay, this is like an hour long video of. Oh my God! Please don't talk. Um, <laughs> of like a recruiter talking about portfolio tips and tricks. Uh, and there's a ton of these videos on YouTube that I've, I've watched pretty much all of them. Another thing to search on Twitter is like search for keywords like portfolio advice or portfolio like advice thread. All these industry artists will like make these giant threads of advice. Um, some people will look up Amber Blade Jones, Micah Scherf, Devin L. Kurtz. They have a lot of good resources, tutorials, resume templates, cover letter templates, brushes, it's anything that you can think of. Um, and else? Yeah. We have a resource doc. It's linked here. This is what Deanna had compiled. Our and also, project. <laughs> and also, uh, Dart, our oh student, yeah, our student advisor. So t- t- take a look. Like look at look at all the least. Yeah, look at all this. It's so dense. It's so amazing. Wow. There's a video game resource doc. Yes. Yeah. Lovely. Yes. Yeah, so there's also the video game resource doc that that Rachel really really spearheaded there's nice video links and artists to look in there yeah they can go back to the and also uh, our uh staff advisor has 3d advice but yes the last point is homework homework do this uh for the rest of your life (laughs) so for real yeah please please we are not joking uh film and value studies to improve your composition um there's this website called film grab i'll put that in the presentation there's a website called film grab it just it's like screenshots of films um just use that do value studies off of that do master studies for environments uh do lighting like draw one thing one environment or one character and just like paint over them in different like lighting scenarios that out of one drawing you can get like five different drawings that's amazing um <laughs> gesture anatomy. oh gesture anatomy perspective practice those things but even if it's just like real life still life um, there's a there's a visual library resource I think linked somewhere in our resource doc. It has um, examples, it has poses, mm-hmm. it has uh, things you can study. Lots of things to draw in there. Yeah, do color and pattern studies. Just like if you find a cool pattern, take a picture of it and then draw it. Um, because if you have good looking patterns and stuff in your art, people will notice that and they will be gravi- they'll gravitate. 
gravitate towards it. Um, lastly, um, this is actual homework, but uh, if you are a little bit lost on what you want to do, or we don't really know how to structure your portfolio, find three people that have your dream job, basically. Uh, if they have portfolios, find their portfolios and study them and uh, apply what they have done to your own work. Yeah. So it's not so much that you're just like copying exactly what they're doing, but you can use their portfolios to see that this is something that I want to aspire to. Like, for example, if I were to look at one of Kat Sai's drawings, I really like the way she's done all these like different, like a color palette, for example. I will try to enact those same color principles in my own work. Um, and then the last point that I want to make is do original projects. So if you're working in the video game or animation industry, um, you might be tempted to be like, oh, let me reimagine Snow White or let me reimagine Cinderella. These are class assignments that are given to students at schools like SCAD and RISD and CalArts and recruiters have seen so many of them that they hate seeing them now. So as much as you can, try and focus on doing original projects. If you wanna reimagine something, reimagine your favorite book or reimagine, I don't know, your favorite movie or something like that. Try to come up with these original concepts and projects and stuff that really means something to you because that meaning is gonna show through and people are gonna like your work. Um, also, don't hesitate to just, this is kind of unrelated, yeah. but like just cold connect with people on LinkedIn yeah. and just bother them. Yeah. Like, hey, can, Honestly. You, can you look at my portfolio? Can, yeah. I, can, I, can we have a quick call to discuss yeah. like, how to get into the industry? Like just, just like bother people. Like, yeah. <laughs> many times they will not respond to you, but yeah. one out of 10, someone will. Yeah. And they're very, it's very helpful. Yeah, like don't, don't, don't use them and just be like, just don't start off the conversation <laughs> with look at my portfolio. Yeah, no, 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 be a good person. Yeah, maybe like ask questions about their art. Maybe there's a certain piece that drew you to their art. Ask them about how did you do this? People like talking about their art and they're most likely going to want to talk about their own art with you. And you can get a lot of information that way. And they might even look at your work um, and give you tips that way. But yeah, don't be afraid to just message people, LinkedIn, Twitter, especially Instagram, just DM them. Be like, I love your work. You want to talk? <laughs> um, and then... Yeah. Thank you. Thank very you much for coming. Yes. Thank you. Any Thank you. any questions? Sorry, it's so late. We didn't make it for so long. Uh, any questions? Did you repeat that question? Sorry. What's the difference between like a school portfolio and like an actual school portfolio? I would say a school portfolio should show more of like uh, a variety of style. Um, because like if you're applying to, I guess, an art school, for example, they want to see that you can do a lot of different, um, I guess, artwork. Again, depends on the type of art school that you're applying to. Like if you're applying to a school like CalArts, they have very specific requirements for what should be in your portfolio. And most schools will have similar requirements, which is the difference between, I guess, applying to a school and applying to some somewhere in the industry. Most companies won't have really specific requirements. They'll just give you vague descriptions. So when you're applying to positions in the industry, look at the role that you're applying to and search up portfolios that um, sort of like correspond with that role and study that. So I would say that would be the main difference. Yeah. Um, if you, like, say you were like applying to Blizzard, would you be able to like submit like fan art? Yes, Blizzard? absolutely. Uh, many Blizzard artists get hired because they make fan art of like, um, like say take more, more no, take a character and you can create a fan skin for them. That's good content. So uh, existing fan art is perfect. Yeah. But like, don't, like, uh, it has to be related to the content. Don't put like, Five Nights at Freddy's or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, how did you guys start with the audience? Ah, okay. I joined junior year, so two years, no, yeah. Two, two years ago. Two years ago. Um, they reached out to me because I had filled out a Wolverine soft uh, Google form. I know how to do spine animation. I know how to do anime art. And they they, they saw potential, so they emailed me. Um, For uh, me, I I reached out to Dia because <laughs> we were we had so much work to do. I was like, crap, we need an artist. I was like, Dia, you want to work with us? And I was like, <laughs> what? Well, I was graduating. I was like, sure. Cool. <laughs> Let's just do it. Are you interested? Are you interested? Does that work? Yeah. Art. Or oh, oh, what's your name? Ah, okay. oh, cool, cool. Nice. We'll talk later. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have a job yet, yeah, but yeah. We, can, we can keep connected. This is how almost everyone gets hired. It's like <laughs> word of mouth almost. <laughs>
spread your yes this wide. yes <laughs> this is my goal with anyone in digipaint is that we hope to make it to the industry one day and we will come back to this club we, just rope you all we will hire game. exclusively from digipaint <laughs> the hiring ban on arts uh in california <laughs> we don't yeah we don't hate any other art school just putting that out there yeah, but at yeah. the same time uh, <laughs> <laughs> we have a question that's a good question so i um i don't think there are any explicit like rules or there, there's been like conversations about this in the industry for recruiting but i would say morally <laughs> uh AR art, AI art is really good for concept art in the sense that you can use it for your thumbnails. So you can help use it to like jump, up, come up with ideas and use it to you know, jump off, paint over it, or not even paint over it, but use it as inspiration. But mm -hmm. uh, actually putting just putting AI art in your portfolio, yeah. I would say like you probably, if you get hired for that role, but you didn't really make the art yourself, it's like, oh, I can't recreate this yeah. properly. So just maybe lean away from that right now yeah like don't put unadulterated ai art into your portfolio like make sure you've done significant work to it to make it not ai art anymore kind of um and if you're just starting if you're starting out or if you're more of like a beginner or a novice don't use ai i would say um like practice your fundamentals practice coming up with compositions off the top of your head um because you should not rely i would say too much on it because it is such a new field because you don't know where it might end up. Um, like develop your own skills as an artist and your own style and then use it to better like serve your art once you are at a good position. So like if you're putting an AI art into your portfolio, make sure that it's significantly changed. I hope. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's, a, it's a good question. Yeah. All right, any other questions? If you guys have more questions, think of anything, you know, we're in the Discord. We're, yeah, so sound, sound off in the <laughs> sound off in the Discord and we will answer you. Or if you just want to reach out to any one of us, you know, hit us up on the Discord. We will get back to you. Yes. Thank you guys so much for coming. Thank you. Woo! Sorry for keeping you oh, late. Yes. <laughs> Sorry that I delayed so much. And thank you for standing by with us on technical. Oh my God. <laughs>